all these requests are just gonna go crazy. So we're gonna see this. Um, so I have to stop it and my stop button doesn't work right now, but let me get it back here and refresh and that'll kill the connection. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Daily Stand Up. In this one, I'm gonna show you the difference between Signal R versus just making regular uh, REST API calls to a, um, a backend uh, server. So the difference um, that I want to show is basically how many requests you can send in one minute. And basically I'm gonna show you the failing point of a REST API versus the failing, well, versus the performance of uh, WebSockets um, using SignalR. So my code is, uh, if you've seen any of the other videos, um, I have a front end um, client, which is a React um, web application, and it's running on a uh, in a .NET web application. Uh, and the .NET um, backend handles uh, all my RabbitMQ connections, SignalR. Um, it has the API that's going to be tested uh, and everything like that. So then I have a local RabbitMQ server running, and then I have a Rust um, service running as well that consumes the messages off my RabbitMQ uh, queue. So that's kind of the gist of what's happening. So if you've seen the last um, videos, you can see that I have basically some code on the back end, or sorry, the, the React uh, web application to basically send um, engine data. For right now, it's just a mock object but until I get there. But uh, this is basically the structure of what it's going to be. And it, it sends it ultimately either to um, my backend API, or now it's going to uh, send it to my uh, SignalR uh, hub that I have uh, registered on my backend. So I'm going to go right into, um, oh, let me move this window. You're not going to be able to, okay. I'm going to move um, this over here, and I'm going to basically run this and show you what happens. So I'm going to point out a couple things. So this is basically the engine simulator as of right now. I have to do a whole bunch of backend work before I actually get it to a point where I can um, build it out further. But I have to get the requests up to a uh, high enough count that I can actually make this. So the request number that I have to hit is at least 4,500 requests per minute. That's because an engine, a two-stroke engine, typically runs about 4,500-ish RPM, uh, you know, give or take a little bit, depending on the size of the engine, uh, just at idle. Full throttle is a lot higher. So I have to get that um, to that number. And basically, I, I just kind of created some of this um, this code here to allow me to do that. So I'm going to show you, put in 4,500 requests every minute. So that specifies the number of requests I'm sending. Again, it's sending that engine uh, object uh, to my backend API. So I'm going to specify to use the API, and that's going to basically route it to, to that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hit start requests. So you can see the number of requests counting. And you can see my signal R notifications working. It's being received uh, from the Rust microservice off of the RabbitMQ server. Um, so you can see that those are telling me some notifications about my engine. But you're going to see something in a second that is important because you're going to see this begin to fail uh, pretty quick. And once it starts failing, all these requests are just going to go crazy. So we're going to see this. Um, so I have to stop it, and my stop button doesn't work right now, but let me get it back here and refresh, and that'll kill the connection. So we got to about 2,000, 20, 22, 50 requests, give or take, um, a few hundred. Um, but we need that to be 2,000 more per minute. So obviously this is not going to work. Two-stroke engines, unless they're you know not functioning correctly, are not going to really be uh, that low of RPM. Uh, unless you're just doing some weird tuning on it. So again, we need to hit 4,500 requests per minute. So we're not going to be able to get it to my REST API. And again, the route that that took, right, is going from my React client over to this um, home controller, uh, this send data endpoint. It's getting the engine model 
which is all the engine data that I showed you, and it's publishing it to my RabbitMQ uh, server that's then being consumed on my Rust microservice here. You can see it parsing out all those temperature values and then sending a notification. You can see here, send message, shut down engine overheated. That is going to then be routed to my notifications consumer right here. It's gonna read that message and it's gonna get that off of the uh, queue and then ultimately uh, publish it back to my um, front end using this uh, send async notifications received that will send it over to a listener I have on the front end. So that's the full route it takes, but again, it fails at 2,000 requests. So I'm going to do the same test, but I'm going to use WebSockets. So I'm going to send it 4,500 requests, and I'm going to specify to use signal R, and then I'm going to hit start requests. And now what we're going to see is it's, well, I'll let it play out, and I'll and we'll watch. Again, the last one failed at about 2,000 requests, so we'll see what happens with this. And again, you can see this is all functioning still. Like It's still receiving all the notifications from the Rust microservice uh, pretty much in real time, and it's taking a few, you know, it's making a few steps to do that. So um, we're seeing some pretty good performance. So we've already surpassed um, where the REST API failed, and we're under that minute time frame still. I really should add a timer, but like I'm just kind of looking at my clock. So we're we're over three, and um, we're about to be over four thousand, and we're still well under our goal. And again, if I but now the interesting thing is I'm just gonna add a zero to this, and I'm gonna tell it to add to make forty five thousand requests per minute, and let's see what it does. So I'm gonna hit start requests. And now I'm <laughs> now it's attempting to send 45,000 requests, but you can see I'm not getting any errors, and you can see the notifications still coming through in real time, which means every single part of the system is functioning correctly, and I'm not getting any errors, which is very exciting. So you can see my Rust microservice is absolutely going crazy, just parsing all those messages. That's doing its thing. It's doing great. And you can see my front end receiving all those notifications, so I just happen to only have two pieces of logic wired up to handle notifications, meaning like I only have a, a warning and a shutdown. But I can add way more logic, and you can kind of see how powerful this can be because it can process so many messages. And again, everything is running locally. I don't have anything running in the cloud or anything. This is just on a 32 or a 36 gigabyte uh, RAM, you know, M3 MacBook. So again, one one. one server. Um, I, again, I'm not hitting any failures at all. Um, I'm sure there's some lag in terms of how many requests it's sending now, but we're at 27,000. <laughs> and we're at like a minute. So it, it seems like there's a little bit of uh, latency. But I mean, again, we're on one machine and we're sending this a many amount of messages and it's going full, doing a full loop. Um, and everything is, there's no lag on here, right? So like I can type, there's zero lag, and we're sending thousands and thousands of requests, and we're still handling real-time notifications, and it's and the front end's performing fine. My little simulator is running perfectly. There's no lag, um, and we're about to hit 45,000 in a second. So this just shows you, I mean, truly how powerful WebSockets can be if leveraged correctly inside of a system. Um, because in the context of this, I'm going to stop when it gets to 45,000. Okay, let's kill that. So <laughs> also, I don't know, I don't know how much memory that would have consumed. Like sometimes it'll tell you 138 megabytes. So barely any. Um, but yeah, so in the context of a system, especially something like this, where it's just, I want to, be able to handle real-time notifications based off of what's happening on my front end, but I don't necessarily need a response back. You know, WebSockets might be what you want to go with. If you need something like a response back, uh, like you would get from a REST API, you're going to be real more, you're going to, real more, you're, you're going to be a lot more limited because you're going to be capped at a, you know, uh, at a smaller number of requests that can be made. Just 
due to the nature of, of uh, making web API requests is because it's a, re a request and then a response. Um, whereas WebSockets is more of just like a acknowledgement, for lack of better words. It's kind of like sending a message up to a queue. It's not really, you're not waiting for anything. You're, you're, you're sending it. Um, so it's a different way of, of going about, you know, your, your architecture of your application. But you can see just in real time, like, again, I can do it again if you want to see. Like, if I hit 45,000 requests, if I even attempt that for use, using an API, you'll see immediately it'll fail in like a second because it'll run out of resources. So it'll, it'll get there, I mean, so if it hits about 18 and then it just it just breaks. So it's like every other one is going to fail for insufficient resources. You can see that. So I'm going to stop that. Um, but yeah, I thought this was a, kind of a cool like demo of like just, just the raw functionality of a REST API versus a WebSocket uh, connection using SignalR for a application that needs to handle very, very high throughput of data. Um, and again, I, we could probably go more with some tweaking, um, but I w the next thing I want to add in here is I have use API and then use SignalR, but I also want to add a direct connection um, to RabbitMQ just, just to see. I've already w surpassed the, the amount of requests or the amount of data, like the, the number that I need. I've already passed that by a factor of like, I mean, you, you just saw of, of like what, um, like eight or nine. So I'm already, I, I just kind of want to experiment with it, right? Because it's kind of, it's actually kind of a good learning tool. Like if you, if you're getting an architecture, you need to, to see the differences between, uh, or performance differences between REST APIs versus WebSockets, this will be super helpful. Um, but yeah, so all the other videos I have, you can see the code for all this stuff. It's not, nothing is, nothing crazy is happening. On the Rust side of things, um, it's not really doing much aside from just parsing the um, the data here. So you can see that it's getting it from um, that message object and then it's checking the temperature. If it's over uh, 500, then it'll do um, this specific amount of logic. So I'm checking, okay, if it's over uh, 500, I'm going to push it into um, this vector of um, ints. And then um, basically if that's, once that exceeds 200, then I'm going to publish this um, message up to my notifications queue saying, hey, you know, warning, engine overheated. If that continues, you know, if that, if the amount of messages um, exceeds uh, 300 or is 300, then I'm going to finally send a shutdown notification saying, hey, engine shut down. And then I'm, I'm ultimately going to wire up logic to say like, hey, if we receive a shutdown command, then, you know, kill the app so we don't, you, you, you don't break your, you, you don't break your engine for lack of better words. Um, so we can add a lot more stuff. And again, Rust is super, super fast. So you can see that it kept up with it. I mean, in real time, which is just incredible. Um, obviously, there might be some lag just because of how many messages I was sending. Like, I wonder if it's still parsing. I don't think it is. No, it's... Is it? It's hard to tell. I don't think it is because I would... No, it's not. Nope. So it kept up with it in, basically in real time, error-free, handles memory really well. So Rust is a really good option if you have a super high throughput of data. Um, and need to do something similar to what I'm doing, which is why I want to try Rust in the first place. Um, but yeah, so that's it. I mean, that's it's kind of neat. So I'm definitely going to be using WebSockets for for um, sending the engine data. So um, yeah, but if you have any thoughts or like suggestions on how else I can kind of build more of a testing framework into this, like testing different. Um, ways to send real high throughput of data. Um, let me know. Again, I'm going to try to add a button just to send directly to RabbitMQ um, and then go about that way and just for fun, just see what numbers I can get versus WebSockets. Um, we'll see. Um, I should say I'm not really using, 
I'm, I'm not really looking to use any cloud-based services, just more from a cost perspective. I don't really want to pay for, for any services. Um, I've used Amazon or AWS uh, SQS before, um, but it's effectively the same thing, right? As a local queue running, it's just that, that happens to be hosted in the cloud and you got to pay for it. So, um, but yeah, let me know if you have any thoughts or um, anything else you want to see on this. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.